Hi folks, Florida Man here. Today it pleases me to begin a new series in the chain of Florida Man Basics videos, The Basics of Austria. This video is called Basics of Austria, Dodging Bullets in 1901. The reason why I titled this video the way I did is both a play on the actual sequence of events that caused World War I, and because Austria is statistically one of the most difficult countries to play in diplomacy. It's the most likely, experience tells us, to lose in the early game, and it's one of the only two countries that can actually be attacked in spring 1901. It can basically lose the game in the first season, with very little chance to recover, no matter how skillful the player's diplomacy is, and that is a uniquely Austrian problem. It is for these reasons that I would argue Austria is the easiest country to screw up in diplomacy. Like Germany and Russia, Austria has multiple neighbors to worry about, being surrounded by Russia, Turkey, Italy, and Germany. So the first thing that a player who draws Austria needs to think about is the relationship to those neighbors. Austria has to have a very fine read on these four neighbors, because there's a very high probability that one or more of them will try to move against you in 1901. Russia may move to Galicia, Turkey may attempt a fall move into Serbia or a bounce in Greece, Germany might try a move to Bohemia or Tyrolia, and Italy could make a move for Trieste or Tyrolia in either spring or fall. Germany is typically the least likely of these neighbors to attack you, but that's a pattern of behavior, not something to count on as a certainty, especially when we consider that the common behavior in the meta of many diplomacy communities is for people to dogpile on Austria. Therefore, it is key for the Austrian player to communicate with all of your neighbors early on and not take safety in any corner for granted. To be safe, Austria needs to have friendly to neutral relations with at least two of its neighbors in 1901, or it's entirely likely that Austria will be crippled before the year is out. Even more important than actually winning people over, though, is getting a good read on everyone's intentions. The Austrian player has a disadvantage in winning people over compared with other players, because the typical pattern is for players to dogpile you early on. Given that someone may have already made a plan to attack you before they even speak with anyone, it may be harder to win them over than it would be if you were not in such a commonly attacked country. However, even if you can't necessarily win someone over, if you pay attention to the way they express themselves, you can frequently determine if they're determined to go against you early on or not. If Austria determines that Russia is attacking, the Russian can be bounced in Galicia and or Romania. If Austria determines the Italian is attacking, Austria can move Trieste to Venice, or Budapest or Vienna to Trieste, to make it safe to move the unit out of Trieste, or Austria can put a unit in Tyrolia. There are many options to keep yourself safe from enemies, but the key is to keep your eyes and ears open to any signals they may give off, consciously or more likely unconsciously, of their anti-Austrian intentions. In dealing with Russia, the key thing to determine in 1901 is whether they're moving to Galicia or not. If the Russians say they're willing to work with you, that's great, but pay close attention how they say what they say, whether or not you feel you can believe them, and what degree of commitment they indicate. Many people find it more difficult to lie very aggressively than they do to give ambiguous or non-committal answers. So if the Russian player makes ambiguous answers to my questions and comments, I will always know that means that I should protect myself by bouncing a probable move to Galicia. In dealing with Germany, Usually the key is to be really friendly and not do anything to make them mad. If the German player is sensible at all, they will not normally be willing to attack you in 1901, and there may be some chance they can be persuaded to lend you some of their power and influence, either to harm Russia or to pressure the Russian into accommodating you in some way. If Germany threatens to keep Russia out of Sweden, or puts an army next to Warsaw, that can be a powerful incentive for the Russians to leave German allies alone. Frankly, there's not much incentive for Germany to take this action, though. Germany has his own problems to deal with in the West, without deciding to throw making Russia angry into the mix. And this early on, you have nothing to offer Germany, except being the most agreeable person in the room and promising your undying friendship and loyalty. So I strongly recommend being very friendly and flattering and making pledges of absolute loyalty to the Germans. There's no cost to doing that, and the Germans can absolutely do you a good turn or two if you can plant the idea in their head that you'll be able to help them in the medium to long term. The sooner you can say you'll do it, the better. Dealing with Italy is the trickiest challenge for Austria in 1901. If you trust Italy in 1901 and you make the wrong combination of moves, a set of moves that does not counter potential aggression from Italy, and he then proves untrustworthy, Italy could wind up controlling one or more of your home centers permanently as early as the first season. This is the easiest way for Austria to be crippled in 1901. So you need to either convince Italy that attacking you is the worst move for him to make in 1901, which is a very credible argument in my opinion, 
or you need to correctly read that Italy intends to attack you in 1901, and take defensive measures. Sometimes you'll find the Italian player has said everything he needs to say to win your confidence, and on those occasions you may find it wise to throw your fate into the Italian's hands in 1901, risking your life by trusting him with a maneuver like the Key Lepanto, which involves letting him move an army through Trieste, which then continues onto the Balkans to help against Turkey. In those cases, you must be especially sensitive to any subtle hints you may get from Italy, or intelligence from other players, that indicates Italy intends to betray you. Because that's such a difficult and delicate thing, I recommend that only more experienced players use the key Lepanto play as Austria. Once you have a dozen or so games under your belt, and you've been deceived a few times, and figured out how you can anticipate that, then I'd revisit the possibility of letting Italy move an army through Trieste. One thing that gives away bad Italian intentions most of the time is if Italy says that in addition to moving Venice to Trieste, he'll move the other army up to Venice. There is no purpose to this 90% of the time other than to attack you, and if Italy makes mention of such an idea, he usually won't have a good justification for it. If Italy does suggest he wants to do something like this, I usually call off the Lepanto altogether. Finally, there's dealing with Turkey. The difficult thing here is that unlike the other two, Turkey doesn't have to show clear hostility towards you or anyone in spring 1901, so you will never know their intentions until at least the fall. I try to encourage Turkey to make an overtly anti-Russian opening in spring 1901, as a way of showing that he sincerely wants to work with me. If Turkey puts an army in Armenia, that tells me that he wants to be friends with me and enemies with Russia. By declaring hostilities to Russia with that anti-Russian move, Turkey is showing he's committed to me, which increases my odds of survival significantly. If Turkey doesn't do that, I usually assume he either plans to fight alongside Russia, or to join whichever country proves to be on the winning side. Either way, that's bad, because you usually need one or two of Turkey, Russia, or Italy to join you in order for your side to be the winning side, and if Turkey isn't joining you from the start, you're already starting to lose ground. I usually like to sweeten the pot for Turkey by promising to support him into Romania or Sevastopol, or to let him have Greece if he takes Armenia. It may not persuade the Turk, but you only have a few options, so I favor trying some amount of bribery to get them on your side. As for moves, one of the most typical openings for Austria involves going for Serbia and blocking Russia out of Galicia. Vienna to Galicia and Budapest to Serbia are very common moves, because Russia almost always chooses to try and sneak attack Austria in Galicia. When I play as Austria and Russia doesn't choose to do this, I am pleasantly surprised that I've taken Galicia, which gives me either an advantage if I fight Russia, or a bargaining chip. I can offer to vacate that position for some Russian favor, like Russia taking Romania with a fleet, and building a fleet in Sevastopol. And that combination of moves is essentially a declaration of hostilities against Turkey. Which, just like the Turkish move to Armenia, getting a tangible commitment by one of those two powers to fight the other is a very valuable asset in terms of Austrian survival. What Trieste does will always depend on what you think Italy is doing. If you think Italy is going to Trieste, you should probably think twice about leaving Trieste unguarded. If you're letting Italy in so that he can do a Kila Panto, that doesn't apply. And if Italy has been so kind as to agree to a mutual DMZ of Venice and Trieste, and you actually believe he means it, you should probably move Trieste towards Greece. I usually lean toward assuming Russia is attacking me and Italy is not, when circumstances make it hard for me to formulate a solid guess as to either of their intentions. The reason is simply that that pattern is very common in the diplomacy communities I've experienced. If the pattern where you play is different, you must adapt to it. If things work out and you successfully manipulate or anticipate your opponent's moves, Hopefully you'll end 1901 with four or five centers rather than two or three, and you'll have accomplished the key goal of securing an ally or two. It may look daunting, but with experience, I've found it's frequently possible to dodge the assassin's bullets in 1901. I hope you've enjoyed this first Basics of Austria video. If so, please like, subscribe, and consider joining the people whose names now appear on screen by supporting the channel with Patreon contributions or subtitle translations. And if you've played as Austria before, we here at Florida Man Diplomacy enjoy reading people's thoughts on the various powers, so please share your own analysis in the comments below. Goodness knows I'm not perfect, so I'm happy to get other perspectives. Until we speak again in the comments below, Florida Man, out.